the Chagos Archipelago due south of the Maldives Archipelago. This chain of islands is the southernmost archipelago of the Chagos Lakodai Ridge, a long submarine mountain range in the Indian Ocean. The Chagos also form a terrestrial ecoregion together with the Maldives and the Lakshadweep. The islands and their surrounding waters are also a vast oceanic environment preservation and protection zone of 544,000 square kilometers, an area twice the size of the UK's land surface. Officially part of the British Indian Ocean Territory, the Chagos were home to the Chagoshans for more than a century and a half until the United Kingdom evicted them in the early 1970s and allowed the United States to build a military base on Diego Garcia the largest of the Chagos Islands. Since 1971, only the atoll of Diego Garcia is inhabited, and only by military and civilian contracted personnel. The sovereignty of the Chagos archipelago is being disputed between the UK and Mauritius. The United Kingdom excised the archipelago from Mauritian territory prior to Mauritius independence. The Chagos group is a combination of different coralline rock structures topping a submarine ridge running southwards across the center of the Indian Ocean, formed by volcanoes above the Ra Copyright Union hotspot. Unlike in the Maldives there is not a clearly discernible pattern of arrayed atolls, which makes the whole archipelago look somewhat chaotic. Most of the coralline structures of the Chagos are submerged reefs. The Chagos contain the world's largest coral atoll. It also has one of the healthiest reef systems in the cleanest waters in the world, supporting half the total area of good quality reefs in the Indian Ocean. As a result, the ecosystems of the Chagos have so far proven resilient to climate change and environmental disruptions. On April 1, 2010, the British government cabinet established the Chagos archipelago as the world's largest marine reserve. At 640,000 km2, it is larger than the country of France or the state of California. It doubled the total area of environmental no-take zones worldwide. The protection of the marine reserve will be guaranteed for the next five years thanks to the financial support of the Bertarelli Foundation. The setting up of the marine reserve would appear to be an attempt to prevent any resettlement by the evicted natives in the 1960s and 70s. Leaked U.S. cables have shown the FCO suggesting to the U.S. counterparts that setting up a protected no-take zone would make it difficult, if not impossible for the islanders to return. The reserve was then created in 2010. Geography The entire land area of the islands is a mere 56.13 akma squared, with the largest island, Diego Garcia, having an area of 32.5 akma squared. The total area including lagoons within atolls, however, is more than 15,000 akma squared, of which 12,642 akma squared are accounted by the Great Chagos Bank, the largest acknowledged atoll structure of the world. The shelf area is 20,607 akma squared, and the exclusive economic zone, which borders the corresponding zone of the Maldive Islands in the north, has an area of 639,611 akma squared. The largest individual islands are Diego Garcia, Eagle, a La Pierre, Eastern Egmont, a La Ducoin and a La Bodam. The number of atolls in the Chagos archipelago is given as four or five in most sources, plus two island groups and two single islands, mainly because it is not recognized that the Great Chagos Bank is a huge atoll structure, and because it is not recognized that Blenheim Reef has islets or cays above or just reaching the high water mark. In addition to the seven atolls with dry land reaching at least the high water mark, there are nine reefs and banks, most of which can be considered permanently submerged atoll structures. They are listed in the table from north to south. The deep oceanic waters around the Chagos Islands, out to the 200 nautical mile limit, include an exceptional diversity of undersea geological features. These areas almost certainly harbor many undiscovered and specially adapted species. Although the deep water habitats surrounding the islands have not been explored or mapped in any detail, work elsewhere in the world has shown that high physical diversity of the sea floor is closely linked to a high diversity of species. Resources The main natural resources of the area are coconuts and fish. The licensing of commercial fishing used to provide an annual income of about $2 million for the British Indian Ocean Territory authorities, 
however licenses have not been given since October 2010, when the last one expired after the creation of the Noteg Marine Reserve. All economic activity is concentrated on the largest island of Diego Garcia, where joint UK-US military facilities are located. Construction projects and various services needed to support the military installations are done by military and contract employees from the UK, Mauritius, the Philippines, and the US. There are currently no industrial or agricultural activities on the islands. All the water, food and other essentials of daily life are shipped to the island. An independent feasibility study led to the conclusion that resettlement would be costly and precarious. Another feasibility study, commissioned by organizations supporting resettlement, found that resettlement would be possible at a cost to the British taxpayer of a £25 million. If the Shea Goshens return, he planned to re-establish copra production and fishing, and to begin the commercial development of the islands for tourism. Until October 2010, skipjack and yellowfin tuna were fished for about two months of the year as their year-long migratory route takes them through Chagos waters. While the remoteness of the Chagos offers some protection from extractive activities, legal and illegal fishing have had an impact. There is considerable poaching of turtles and other marine life. Sharks, which play a vital role in balancing the food web of tropical reefs, have suffered sharp declines from illegal fishing for their fins and as bycotch in legal fisheries. Sea cucumbers, which cleanse sand, are poached to feed Asian markets. Climate The Chagos archipelago has a tropical oceanic climate. Hot and humid but moderated by trade winds. Climate is characterized by plenty of sunshine, warm temperatures, showers and light breezes. December through February is considered the rainy season. Typical weather conditions include light west-northwesterly winds and warmer temperatures with more rainfall. June to September is considered the drier season, characterized by moderate southeasterly winds, slightly cooler temperatures and less rainfall. The annual mean rainfall is 2600 mm varying from 105 mm during August to 350 mm during January. Sovereignty Dispute The Chagos had been part of Mauritius since the 18th century when the French first settled the islands. All of the islands forming part of the French colonial territory of Isle de France were ceded to the British in 1810 under the Act of Capitulation signed between the two countries. In 1965, prior to Mauritian independence, the UK split the archipelago from the territory of Mauritius to form the British Indian Ocean Territory. United Nations resolutions banned the dismemberment of colonial territories before independence. Mauritius has repeatedly asserted that the British claim that the Chagos archipelago is one of its territories is a violation of law and of UN resolutions. The UK has stated that it has no doubt about its sovereignty over the Chagos but has also said that the Chagos will be returned to Mauritius once the islands are no longer required for defence purposes. Given the absence of any progress with the UK, Mauritius has decided to internationalise the dispute and take up the matter at all appropriate legal and political forums. History Early history, according to Southern Maldivian oral tradition, Local traders and fishermen were occasionally lost at sea and got stranded in one of the islands of the Chagos. Eventually they were rescued and brought back home. However, these islands were judged to be too far away from the Maldives to be settled permanently by Maldivians. Thus for many centuries the Chagos were ignored by their northern neighbors. In Maldivian law the whole group is known as Falhavohi or Holabe. There are no separate names for the different atolls of the Chagos in the Maldivian oral tradition. 16th to 19th century, Portuguese explorers were the first Europeans to discover the archipelago. Although Portuguese navigator Pedro de Mascarenhas is credited with having discovered the islands during his voyage of 1512 Euro 13, there is little corroborative evidence for this. Cartographic analysis points to 1532 or later. Portuguese seafarers named the group as Bassas de Sugars, Portuguese, Sugars referring to the holy wounds of the crucifixion of Jesus. They named as well some of the atolls, such as Diego Garcia and Piras Banjos Atoll, mentioned as Pedro dos Banjos in 1513 by Afonso de Albuquerque. Neglected by the Portuguese, this lonely and isolated group, 
economically and politically uninteresting, was never made part of the Portuguese Empire. The earliest and most interesting description of the Chagos, before coconut trees grew widely on the islands, was written by Manuel Rangel, a castaway from the Portuguese ship Conseia Picavolt Poundo which ran aground on the Piras Banjos reefs in 1556. The French were the first to lay a claim on the Chagos after they settled Ra Copyright Union and Ile de France. The French began issuing permits for companies to establish coconut oil plantations on the Chagos in the 1770s. On April 27, 1786 the Chagos Islands and Diego Garcia were claimed for Great Britain. However, the territory was ceded to Britain by treaty only after Napoleon's defeat, in 1814. The Chagos were governed from Mauritius, which was by that time also a British colony. In 1793, when the first successful colony was founded on Diego Garcia, the largest island, coconut plantations were established on many of the atolls and isolated islands of the archipelago. Initially the workers were slaves, but after 1840 they were freemen, many of whom were descended from those earlier slaves. They formed an inter-island culture called Ilois. Commander Robert Moresby made a survey of the Chagos on behalf of the British Admiralty in 1838. After Moresby took measurements of most of the atolls and reefs, the archipelago was charted with relative accuracy for the first time. 20th century. On August 31, 1903 the Chagos archipelago was administratively separated from the Seychelles and attached to Mauritius. In November 1965. The UK purchased the entire Chagos archipelago from the then self-governing colony of Mauritius for a £3 million to create the British Indian Ocean Territory, with the intent of ultimately closing the plantations to provide the uninhabited British territory from which the US would conduct its military activities in the region. On December 30, 1966, the US and the UK executed an agreement through an exchange of notes which permit the United States Armed Forces to use any island of the BIOT for defense purposes for 50 years, followed by a 20-year optional extension to which both parties must agree by December 2014. As of 2010, only the atoll of Diego Garcia has been transformed into a military facility. In April 1966 the British government bought the entire assets and real property of the Seacher Luis Chagos a Gallagher Company, which owned all the islands of the BIOT, for a £600,000 and administered them as a government enterprise while awaiting US funding of its proposed facilities, with an interim objective of paying for the administrative expenses of the new territory. However, the plantations, both under their previous private ownership and under government administration, proved consistently unprofitable due to the introduction of new oils and lubricants in the international marketplace, and the establishment of vast coconut plantations in the East Indies and the Philippines. Between 1967 and 1973, the entire population was removed against its will from the islands and relocated to Mauritius and the Seychelles to make way for a joint United States-United Kingdom military base on Diego Garcia. Exiles lose appeal over benefits. BBC Online. November 2, 2007 In March 1971, Seabi U.S. Naval Construction Battalions arrived on Diego Garcia to begin the construction of the communications station and an airfield. To satisfy the terms of an agreement between the U.K. and the U.S. for an uninhabited island, the plantation on Diego Garcia was closed in October of that year. The plantation workers and their families were initially relocated to the plantations on Piras Banjos and Salomon Atolls in the northwest of the archipelago. Those who requested were transported to the Seychelles or Mauritius. In 1972, the UK decided to close all the remaining plantations throughout the Chagos, and deported the Ilois to the Seychelles or Mauritius. The then independent Mauritian government refused to accept the islanders without payment, and in 1973, the UK gave the Mauritian government an additional 650,000 currency to resettle the islanders. However despite this islanders often found themselves in woefully inadequate housing and living conditions. Currently, the only human structures on the islands are located in the Joint Defence and Naval Support Facility Diego Garcia. Other uninhabited islands, especially in the Salomon Atoll, 
are common stopping points for long-distance yachtsmen traveling from Southeast Asia to the Red Sea or the coast of Africa, although a permit is required to visit the outer islands. Current Situation Diego Garcia is currently the only inhabited island in the Chagos, all of which comprise the British Indian Ocean Territory, usually abbreviated as BIOT. It is an overseas territory of the United Kingdom, and the government of the BIOT consists of commissioner appointed by the Queen. The commissioner is assisted by an administrator and small staff, and is based in London and resident in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. This administration is represented in the territory by the officer commanding British forces on Diego Garcia, the Brit Rep. Laws and regulations are promulgated by the Commissioner and enforced in the BIOT by Brit representative There are no indigenous peoples living on the island, and the UK represents the territory internationally. A local government is normally envisioned does not exist. Around 1,700 military personnel and 1,500 civilian contractors, mostly American, are stationed on Diego Garcia. There are two transnational political issues which affect the BIOT, through the British government. First, the island nation of Mauritius claims the Chagos archipelago, including Diego Garcia. A subsidiary issue is the Mauritian opposition to the 1 April 2010 UK government's declaration that the BIOT is a marine protected area with fishing and extractive industry prohibited. Second, the issue of compensation and repatriation of the former inhabitants of several of the archipelago's atolls, exiled since 1973, continues in litigation and as of August 23, 2010 has been submitted to the European Court of Human Rights by a group of former residents. Litigation continues as of 2012 regarding the right of return for the displaced islanders and Mauritian sovereignty claims. In addition, Advocacy on the Shea Goshen's behalf continues both in the United States and in Europe. WikiLeaks Cablegate Disclosure According to WikiLeaks Cablegate documents, the UK proposed in 2009 that the BIOT become a marine reserve. The summary paragraph of the reference diplomatic cable follows. HMG would like to establish a marine park or reserve providing comprehensive environmental protection to the reefs and waters of the British Indian Ocean Territory. A senior Foreign and Commonwealth Office official informed Paul Counts on May 12. The official insisted that the establishment of a marine park a euro the world's largest a euro would in no way impinge on USG use of the BIOT, including Diego Garcia, for military purposes. He agreed that the UK and US should carefully negotiate the details of the marine reserve to assure that US interests were safeguarded and the strategic value of BIOT was upheld. He said that the BIOT's former inhabitants would find it difficult, if not impossible, to pursue their claim for resettlement on the islands if the entire Chagos archipelago were a marine reserve. People and language The islanders were known as the Ulois and they numbered about 1,000. They were of mixed African, South Indian, and Malay descent and lived very simple, Spartan lives in their isolated archipelago. Few remains of their culture have been left although their language is still spoken by some of their descendants in Mauritius and the UK. The inhabitants of Chagos were speaking Chagossian Creole, also known as Ilois Creole, a French Creole which has not been properly researched from the linguistic point of view. The island names are a striking combination of Portuguese, Dutch, French, English and Creole names. As of 2012, the islands have about 3,000 people a Euro 300 British government personnel and 2,700 American Army personnel. Ecology The biodiversity of the Chagos archipelago and its surrounding waters is one of the main reasons it is so special. But this incredible diversity is under threat as at least 60 species that call Chagos home are already on the IUCN red list of threatened species. Coral the reefs host at least 371 species of coral including the endemic brain coral Ctenella shagis. The coral cover is dense and healthy even in deep water on the steep outer reef slopes. Thick stands of branching staghorn coral protect the low-lying islands from wave erosion. Despite the loss of much of the coral in a bleaching event in 1998 the recovery in the Chagos has been remarkable and overall coral cover increases year-on-year. Year. Fish. 
The reefs are also home to at least 784 species of fish that stay near to the shores of the islands including the endemic Chagos clownfish and many of the larger ascent grouper that have already been lost from overfishing in other reefs in the region. As well as the healthy communities of reef fish there are significant populations of pelagic fish such as manta rays, sharks and tuna. Shark numbers have dramatically declined as a result of illegal fishing boats that seek to remove their fins and also as accidental by catching the two tuna fisheries that used to operate seasonally in the Chagos. Birds 17 species of breeding seabirds can be found nesting in huge colonies on many of the islands in the archipelago, and 10 of the islands have received formal designation as important bird areas, by BirdLife International. This means that Chagos has the most diverse breeding seabird community within this tropical region. Of particular interest are the large colonies of sooty terns, brown and lesser noddies wedge-tailed shearwaters and red-footed boobies. Turtles, the remote islands make perfect undisturbed nursery sites for nests of green and hawksbill turtles. The populations of both species in Chagos are of global significance given the critically endangered status of hawksbills and the endangered status of green turtles on the IUCN Red List. Chagos turtles were heavily exploited during the previous two centuries, but they and their habitats are now well protected by the administration of the British Indian Ocean Territory and are recovering well. Crabs The coconut crab is the world's largest terrestrial arthropod reaching over 1 meter in leg span and 3.5-4 kilos in weight. As a juvenile it behaves like a hermit crab and uses empty coconut shells as protection but as an adult this giant crab climbs trees and can crack through a coconut with its massive claws. Despite its wide global distribution, it is rare in most of the areas it is found. It is primarily threatened by over-collection for food but also as ornaments for sale to tourists and as bait for fish traps. Demand for coconut crabs as souvenirs is strong, and other threats include habitat destruction and predation from introduced species such as rats. The coconut crabs on Chagos constitute one of the most undisturbed populations in the world. An important part of their biology is the long distances their young can travel as larvae. This means the Chagos coconut crabs are a vital source for replenishing other overexploited populations in the Indian Ocean region. Insects A total of 113 species of insect have been recorded from the Chagos Islands. Plants The Chagos Islands have been colonized by plants since there was sufficient soil to support them a euro probably less than 4,000 years. Seeds and spores arrived on the emerging islands by wind and sea or from passing seabirds. The native flora of the Chagos Islands is thought to comprise 41 species of flowering plants and four ferns as well as a wide variety of mosses, liverworts, fungi and cyanobacteria. Today, the status of the Chagos Islands a Euro unregistered trademark native flora depends very much on past exploitation of particular islands. About 280 species of flowering plants and ferns have now been recorded on the islands but this increase reflects the introduction of non-native plants by humans either accidentally or deliberately. Because some of these non-native species have become invasive and pose a threat to the native ecosystems, plans are being developed to control them. On some islands, native forests were felled to plant coconut palms for the production of copra oil. Other islands remain unspoiled and support a wide range of habitats, including unique Pisonia forests and large clumps of the gigantic fish poison tree. Unspoiled islands provide us with the biological information that we need in order to re-establish the native plant communities on heavily altered islands. These efforts will ultimately help to improve the biodiversity of the Chagos Islands. Conservation Efforts, Past The Chagos is one of the few marine locations in the world where there are almost no ongoing direct human impacts over almost all of its areas. In April 2010 the Chagos was designated as a marine reserve by the UK government. That will, among other things, allow the area to serve as a reference site for global scientific research to aid in understanding of such things as climate change, tropical marine ecosystems and the impacts of commercial fisheries. Successive UK governments, both Labour and Conservative, 
have supported environmental conservation of the Chagos and have resisted attempts to allow the exiled Chagosians to return. They have committed to treat the whole area as a World Heritage Site. In 2003, the UK government established an environment zone under Article 75 of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. This zone extends 200 nautical miles from the islands. On eastern Diego Garcia, the largest island of the Chagos and the site of Uka Euro US military facility, Britain has designated the very large lagoon and the eastern arm of the atoll and seaward reefs as a wetland of international importance under the Convention on Wetlands of International Importance. Present, on April 1, 2010 Britain issued a declaration that the Chagos Islands had been legally constituted into the world's largest nature reserve with an area of a quarter of a million square miles. Aperin, Juliet. Britain protects Chagos Islands, creating world's largest marine reserve. The Washington Poster, this followed an effort led by the Chagos Environment Network a collaboration of nine leading conservation and scientific organizations seeking to protect the rich biodiversity of the Chagos Archipelago and its surrounding waters. The Chagos Environment Network cites several reasons for supporting a protected area, while Glafia, the Chagos Noteg Marine Reserve would maintain the pure and unpolluted waters of Chagos, providing a safe refuge for its rich marine life, including many threatened animals, such as turtles and sharks. Seabirds and nesting turtles too will benefit from the additional conservation measures that a protected area will bring. Both groups are recovering from severe depredations of the past in a way that is not possible in most places. Fish errors are, world fish stocks have declined because the human race exploits the sea. A larger Euro no take a Euro unregistered trademark protected area will assist fish population recovery potentially increasing fish numbers over a much wider area. The protected area will also provide a temporary refuge for migratory species, such as tuna, from exploitation. However there have been arguments for keeping a controlled fishery, the fees from which could be used to support conservation efforts in the area. Fiopli, with regard to the forcibly removed Chagossian people, Whatever the outcome of legal challenges brought by Chagossian groups against the UK government, the Chagos Environment Network believes that the Chagos Archipelago need conservation now and that this will be beneficial to everyone under all future legal scenarios. The Chagos Environment Network urged that the Chagos Islands and their surrounding waters be designated as a no take marine reserve without prejudice a euro to the outcome of the legal process. This designation would mean that the Chagos Islands and their resources would remain healthy no matter what the future holds, but that conservation arrangements could be modified if necessary in the light of a change in circumstances. Science C, the Chagos is one of the few marine locations in the world where there are almost no ongoing, direct human impacts over almost all of its areas. The marine reserve could serve as a reference site for global scientific research to aid in our understanding of such things as climate change, tropical marine ecosystems and the impacts of commercial fisheries. Deep Ocean Air, the deep oceanic waters around the Chagos Islands, out to the 200 nautical mile limit, include an exceptional diversity of undersea geological features. These areas almost certainly harbor many undiscovered and specially adapted species. UK international commitment to the creation of the Chagos protected area would be an important contribution by the UK to at least seven international environmental conventions. It would also contribute to the ICA Euro unregistered trademark s global commitments, such as halting the decline of biodiversity by 2010, establishing marine protection networks by 2012, and restoring depleted fish stocks to sustainable levels by 2015. The UK government opened a three-month public consultation which ended after 5 March 2010 about conservation management of the Chagos Islands and its surrounding waters. See also, List of Islands in Chagos Archipelago, Chagos Archipelago Sovereignty Dispute, Great Chagos Bank, Chagos Marine Protected Area, Depopulation of Diego Garcia, List of Island Countries and Territories in the Indian Ocean, British Indian Ocean Territory. Indian Ocean, References. Further reading, Pilger, John. Freedom Next Time. Bantam Press.
ISBN A0 593 7 A Chapter 1, Stealing a Nation, PPA 19 A Euro 60, Padma Rao, Der Edict der Car Paragraph Nigan, in, Der Spiegel, December 5, 2005, PPA 152 A Euro 4. Xavier Romero Friars, The Maldive Islanders, A Study of the Popular Culture of an Ancient Ocean Kingdom. Barcelona 1999, ISBN 84-7254-801-5, David Vine, Island of Shame, The Secret History of the U.S. Military Base on Diego Garcia. Princeton University Press 2009, ISBN 978-0-691-13869-5, External Links, Chagos, a documentary film. Indian Ocean Pilot